All right, we're gonna do a little walk through of this, uh, this ProMaster, this 2015 diesel. It's a 2500, 159 wheelbase. Uh, we've got everything finished on it. Uh, the lady's supposed to come pick it up today, so we're gonna do a final walk through here, and then I'll tag her reaction whenever she actually sees it, because she hasn't seen it since the day she dropped it off, other than the first YouTube video. Up on the roof there, we've got 400 watts of Renergy Solar and a uh, Max Air fan. She did have uh, running boards put on it there. Uh, she requested some windows in the back. She wanted uh, frameless windows. So we installed uh, two of them once we finally got them in the mail. They do open, they do have screens. And it makes a, a world of difference ventilation wise in this fan uh, i wish someone would make a stock appearing window for the back of these that would open other than the little small cut out glass piece uh, it'd be nice if it was a full open like the old uh, fords and chevys conversions used to be she also requested a uh, a window in the side above her kitchen area. Uh, she wanted it uh, frameless as well. So we put in this, that's a 17 by 48. And that's that's about as big as you can go opening wise because of the structure of the van. So I said, other than that, that's the only exterior modifications we made. You can see the the max air fan just right now i've got it on automatic so whenever it gets up to about 80 it'll kick on uh, i gotta show her that feature so let's take a peek at the best part the inside the flooring is uh it's got a half inch of foam half inch plywood and then the uh, the tongue and groove on top of that she wanted a dark floor so that's what we put in eventually she wants to put in a uh, a swivel so we put that little step there so you have some place to put your feet and uh, she also has a, a dog that likes to sit beside her when she drives so we extended that up to cover the soft spot in the floor or if she wanted to, she could always uh, put in a small table right here, put the pedestal right here. Then when she swiveled this seat around, she'd have another little little dining area or, you know, she can sit and look out the window or whatever. Um, she wanted, she has a, almost like a Berkey. And she wanted a little stand here that's just sitting there. Uh, I don't want to put any way, uh, uh, like an eye hook or anything to fasten it up there yet because I'm not sure where she's going to put it. She didn't give me any uh, dimensions other than seven and a half inches is what it requires base. So I built that one eight. So we'll see. Uh, we've got a dorm style refrigerator. A lot. It fits perfect right there. A little small freezer. Plenty of room for food, drink, whatever. And then for traveling, you just bring that around, hook it right there, and I mean it'll it keeps it closed. Uh, under the sink. There's six gallons of fresh water, six gallons of gray water, and you just unhook that bungee and you can slide them out. Um, to get the gray water tank out, you just unscrew that little, uh, the nut there on top, and that'll raise up enough you can slide the gray water tank out. Uh, same with the, the fresh water, you can actually pull it all the way out and then unhook it. So, oh, it must have got 80 in here, the fan kicked on. But 
I, I built all the cabinets, cabinet doors, the countertop. That's a nice, uh, just regular sanded birch plywood that we beefed up the edge, sanded down to 1500 grit stain, and it's got uh, five coats of polyurethane on it. Shut this fan here off. It does have uh, electric running water. I know some people complained about the the manual pump that I put in that one, but that's what the owner wanted, so that's what I put in. It's quiet which is nice compared to a couple of the other pumps. I am actually gonna order a couple more of them just because they're so quiet. And then uh, the lady requested a, she didn't want cabinets, upper cabinets. She wanted a shell. So this is 12 inches from here to the ceiling. And it's about a two and a half inch lip to keep stuff from coming out. It's 13 inches deep. And it runs the whole length of the driver's side. And then we also put one on the passenger side here. I think that's uh, right around four feet. Uh, we put in a full-size bed for either if she has company or uh, for resale. Uh, she is a, a older lady. And that way, you know, if something happens, her husband, kids, whatever, will have an easier time selling this with a with a full size bed. Uh, I built the the little lagoon style tabletop the same way as I did the countertop, three quarter inch, beefed the edges up, same plywood, you know, same uh, five coats of polyurethane. We did that because uh, that way she can still get to the bed, you know, just by moving this table out of the way and she can turn around and, and sit down on the bed with no problem. Added this little door here, that way she can still access some of the under bed storage from the inside. I made these cushions. Uh, it's four and a half inches of uh, of cushion foam. Instead of a back on that, we went with a couple pillows. Uh, just because it, it's simpler, it's easier, and and honest to me, it, it looks better. And if the pillows start to, you know, get flat or whatever, you can always just uh, replace them with something different. And then under this bed or under, under this seat, you've got. All kinds of storage. You also have a 12 volt, a dual 110 with a dual USB. All the USB and everything runs off the inverter. Uh, I went with a slat style bed. That way the mattress can get ventilation. That way you don't have to worry about mildew or anything like that. Let me get the table around here and it will show you the other side. I also added another plug in down here that way if she's uh, she's sitting here at the table she can plug in a laptop or whatever. Under this bench is her uh, Uh, that's a 2,000 watt power drive inverter, and there's two uh, Renergy 100 amp hour batteries. So whenever she's on shore power, uh, just to simplify it, it's it's cheaper, and she wanted something very simple, basic. Uh, since she doesn't have air conditioning or anything like that in here. So that plug-in right there 
it is direct wired into a 15 amp uh, plug-in in the back bumper. So all she has to do is take this plug, plug it in there, and that plug, plug it in there, and then she's running off shoreline. That way she doesn't have to worry about anything. Even though we, we do have solar, that is a uh, Rover 40 amp MPPT charge controller. And then with the fan on automatic, it was running quite a bit of the night because it, it's been hot, very hot here. But this morning it was cooled down below 80 in here. So, you know, it's doing its job. So let's go check out the outside there. Don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, she has the uh, luggable loo style toilet. And she wanted to spot underneath of a bench. That way she can uh, just slide it out here in the floor, do what she has to do. And then she can slide it back in there, you know, if she needs to use it. Or she can use that as storage or whatever, but I give her a place for that as well. For the forever bond that complains about, uh, you know, and not having a toilet. There's a space for a toilet. Okay, right down here is the uh, shoreline I was telling you about. It's just 15 amp. Just takes a regular extension cord. Since she doesn't have a big air conditioner or anything, she doesn't have a microwave or nothing. So, she doesn't really need a big uh, 30 amp RV plug. Alright, so from the back here, you can get kind of a better idea of what the, what the layout is here. There is a lot of underbed storage. Um, I built these here, these little boxes, these covers. That way you can still get to the tail lights, you know, to replace the bulb without any issue. There's five screws, two here, two on this side, and then one down here. And all you have to do is tip that this way from the top and then lift it out and then that takes care of that same with this side even with the plug-in the cord is fastened to the inside here it runs down and comes over this is a cheap easy easy build for anyone that that wants to replicate it all she's going to be doing hooking up back here is basically charging her phones off of this plug and her uh uh, CPAP, which you can set on that shelf up there. So if anything ever happens where they need to take this off to replace the tail light bulb, they don't have to tear anything apart. They don't have to unhook any wires. It's literally you unplug that, pull this panel out. Do what you got to do. Put it back in. That's it. I know there's guys going to be complaining well, that needs to have a plug it. That's that's fine. No more than you're going to pull on a 2,000 watt inverter. You know, it's no different than having an extension cord plugged in the whole way. But that's the build. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it or not. Let's see if I can zoom in here. I did put a LED light strip right above the uh, countertop. There is a switch right there that uh, that she can turn on whenever she's cooking if she needs a little bit more light. Uh, we did end up going with 10, 10 LEDs in the ceiling. They are on dimmers. These four here runs off of this switch. The six up front runs off of this switch over here by the by the other little seating area. 
So I think she'll be happy happy with it. Oh, let me go around. I forgot something. One of the luxuries of this van, because it is a, a diesel ProMaster, is we installed a uh, Chinese diesel heater. I've installed about 50 of these, and so far I've only had issue with uh, three. Two of them was the controllers, and uh, one of them was the, because uh, it carboned up, uh, it was for a fleet owner that has several of these vans and the driver that he had in there would never turn it up on high because he was scared of it. He'd run on low and then once it started carboning up and smoking, then uh, then he got scared of it and wouldn't even turn it on at all. So, right there is the the little black exhaust there. That's where the hot air comes out. It'll blow across the floor so the heater rise. The slots cut into the uh, toe kick. That is also to give uh, fresh air to the heater because it is under the floor of the, the cabinet. And it does get some air, you know, right around the refrigerator there. I've done this uh, on a few, a few of these builds, and haven't had any issue whatsoever with uh, with them overheating or anything like that. And by having, uh, let's see, there's what six screws. All that shelving comes out, and the floor of the cabinet, so you can get right there to the heater if you ever need to uh, maintenance on it. And it's it's tied in directly to the fuel line or the fuel tank. That way, you know, there's no auxiliary tank on this one. But there it is. We'll find out what the, what the young lady thinks of it whenever she shows up here in a couple hours. So, we'll go from there. That's okay. Oh my God. <laughs> yourself red oh my god nice. and right now the refrigerator is cold there's nothing in it but the refrigerator is cold it's all running off the solar so and, and it's, the refrigerator has been on for about three days now all running off the solar wonderful so, look at this i think she's pretty happy so i'm gonna get off here and, and show her all the little little details of it all right I forgot to shoot an outro to uh, miss woods van there uh, I think she she enjoyed it rather well uh, she seemed to be pretty happy with it she's uh, uh, told me she's getting ready to head out on her first trip in it so I um, look forward to seeing some pictures of her out and enjoying this beautiful country uh, like always, if you need any help with your projects, you can contact me through email at uh, redscustomdesign@outlook.com, or uh, you can follow me on my Instagram and my Facebook group page, all under Reds Custom Design. Thanks for watching.